Hi, my name is Haven Hansen. My favorite sports team is the Texas Rangers. Hi, my name is Lexi Rossio, and my favorite subject is math. Hi, my name is Jenny Patterson, and my favorite sport to watch is softball. Hi, my name is Addison Young. My favorite animal is a goat. Hi, my name is Addison Williams. My favorite food is shrimp. Hi, my name is Reese Tate, and my favorite color is pink. Hi, my name is Raylan Van Zee. My favorite college team is OU. Hi, my name is Isabel Mathis, and my favorite subject is math. Hi, my name is Corbin Stucker Stroud. My favorite sport to play is softball. Hi, my name is Peyton Richards, and my favorite thing to do in my free time is drawing. Hi, my name is Billy Robinson, and my favorite athlete is Logan Eggleston. That is Team Texas. Biggest game of their season right here in the semifinal against Virginia. Lexi Rocio will take a big cut at the first pitch she sees from Kaylee Hodges. Rocio, the shortstop for Texas. Her dad, Edward Rocio, the manager of this team. Second pitch makes contact and Rolex, Lexi Rocio on first. Texas will now bring up Raylan Van Z into this lineup. Hey, they got the job done in extra innings. They're a tough team. Yeah, they are really a complete offense, one through nine, hitting almost 300 at the, the Little League World Series. And what was so key for Texas, you mentioned it, Amanda, was that Raylan Van Zee, who has stepped in now, did not pitch seven innings. She only pitched six innings yesterday, meaning she can pitch again today. If not, she would have to wait a calendar day to come back in the circle. Yeah, tough decision. Big time strategy going on in last night's game when they went to extras. Raylan Van Zee out to center, and Erica Figgy is there. Kaylee Hodges has not seen Texas, although these two teams have played. Texas got the win in the first meeting, 4-2, to two, but they like that strategy of putting a new face out there. Well, working the edges, and I think that's really what's important. I love the fact that, you know, this team as a staff has limited their free passes, and so that's what Hodges is going to have to do against this very aggressive team for Texas, but also it's the changeup. That pitch right there is going to be so important. Addison Young trying to beat it out. He'll try to get the runner going to third. And the tag is made. Isabella Virouette over at third makes the tag. Some big time defense for Virginia. And there's a player for Texas down. Lexi Rocio was aggressive, rounding second, seeing that third base was open, tries to slide around. But she's still out. Virginia heads up defense. They're coming up to bat. Little League team. My name is Aaliyah Myers, and my favorite food is shrimp. My name is Jordan Jefferson, and my favorite subject is math. My name is Cammie Walter, and my favorite sports team is UVA. My name is Trista Davis, and my favorite color is orange. My name is Erica Figge, and my favorite hobby is to juggle. My name is Aiden Wong, and my favorite subject in school is science. My name is Isabella Verouet, and my favorite sports team is the Yankees. My name is Savannah Wright, and my favorite color is yellow. My name is Jenna Kiefer, and my favorite sports team is the Atlanta Braves. My name is Kaylee Hodges, and my favorite sports team is Florida Gators. My name is Kaylee Mitchell, and my favorite food is steak. My name is Aislinn Bossler, and my favorite sports team is Texas Raiders. My name is Jessa Miller, and my favorite color is green. There's Chesterfield Little League, and Bill Figge is the manager of this Virginia team. Big time fist pumper because he loves this lineup. We did get to talk to him earlier today before this game. He wanted to see a better ap approach at the plate from everybody in his batting order. Oh, that's where it's so important. Approach at the plate, having a plan, breaking things down, understanding the strike zone. We spoke a lot about that in the last game. So Erica Figgy will lead off. She is leading this tournament, hitting 778. And we mentioned it, Raylan Van Zee, number 22 in purple, in the circle. 
after six innings yesterday. She has pitched more innings than anyone else in this tournament. 29 innings pitched, 30 strikeouts. She will live on the outside corner to righties and outside corner to lefties as well, but she loves her curveball. Try to find the strike zone early. Erica Figgy will be the first one she will face on a four-game hit streak. Virginia's only loss in this tournament, well, that was to Texas in pool play. So Virginia did see Vansy in that game, feel confident knowing that they've seen her pitches. I'll have to make those adjustments that they weren't able to make in that very first game here in the semifinals. Yeah, they were even going to go back and watch that game, yeah. Michelle, what Coach Figgy told us. Because and it was Erica Figgy's yeah. idea to go back and watch that game, not just talk about approach. Hey, we've seen Van Z. Here's what we you know, might do hypothetically. She wanted to had the idea to go back and watch the game and see exactly how each player was pitched and exactly what she likes to go to with two strikes when she throws her change up. It was a four to two victory for Texas in their pool play meeting. Let's see, Rocio, two for three. We already saw her get a hit for Texas. Let's see what Erica Figgy can do as that one gets away from Raylan Van Z. Erica Figgy's just that kind of player, as we've learned over the last few days. She's super competitive. They have a competitive family. Her sister, Erin, she's competitive with her at home. They play little games between each other. So, of course, she's scouting Texas. <laughs> going on with Van Z right now? She started out yeah, super sharp on the outside corner. Like maybe the ball's oh, slipping yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. She needs to rub it up, use some rosin. She does have a rosin bag at the back. There you go. And we had a few managers talk to us about that last night, that their pitchers were having trouble keeping the ball dry. It's been very humid and hot here. We've had rain too, but not today. And so Erica Vicky will walk to start things off for the Virginia lineup. Yeah, and, uh, you could just tell that she started to feel so uncomfortable in that at bat because the first three pitches were just perfectly exactly where they needed to be. Aislinn Bossler. Stepping up next, no outs, and a runner on thanks to the leadoff walk. Her dream job, be a video game designer. That sounds fun. All of these players filled out questionnaires for us. We got a few chuckles along the way. Erica Figgy is going to bump over to second on that wild pitch. I think we were talking yesterday, guys, just trying to learn to use the rosin bag to keep that hand dry. It's a little bit of a process, is it not? I mean, I'm not a pitcher, but you two are. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while to get used to the feel of rosin because it, when you first start to use it, it almost feels slippery. And just like that, Figgy's at third. Yeah, I think it'd be a good time to call a timeout here. Great. Isabel Mathis, her catcher, has walked out to the circle. It's Edward Rocio, the manager in the dugout. Raylan Van Zee looked so good yesterday. She was tough, really tested by North Carolina. Two balls, no strikes to Bossler. Just missed with that pitch there, too. Sometimes when you have control issues, she's losing a lot of those pitches high. Go ahead to a, a cross seam grip, four fingers over the, the seams just to get a little more control and feel up the seam of the ball. So Raylan Van Zee trying her hardest 
to bring that pitch in the strike zone, but two walks to start this game. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, just know that this is a rarity. We have yeah. not seen this very much at all at the World Series. A couple of back-to-back -back walks. That hasn't happened very much. These pitchers have had such good command. Bossler going. And Figgy will come home as the ball goes out to center. Virginia has an early lead. Well, that's an interesting decision for Isabel Mathis to throw down on a first and third situation with no outs. The throw short hops up to Addison Young, and it just bounces off of, actually looked like Bosner's leg and went into the outfield. Kaylee Mitchell. Rolls it to center, runners on the corners. Virginia taking advantage. Haley Mitchell just being aggressive, a pitch that's more over the middle of the plate, drives it right back where it was pitched to center field. Virginia just continuing to keep the, their foot on the gas pedal. That brings us to Jasmine Miller. First baseman. Still no outs. And runner going. This Virginia team will be very aggressive on the base pass. They came into this game 12 for 12 on stolen bases. They had seven stolen bases against Arizona. Well, that's one of the things Coach said. We're going to move the defense as much as possible because this Texas team typically has a very, very good defense. Triple play yesterday, two double plays, a lot of web gems. They've only made three errors in all the games that they've played here. So you could just tell in these last four batters, just things a little out of sync. There's going to be interference. Yeah. And they'll call the runner out at third because she interfered with Lexi Rocio trying to make the throw to first base. So this ball hit right at Rocio, and you can see the, <laughs> the glove she, she gets her glove. picked off. <laughs> and she still tries to complete the ground yes, ball. which is <laughs> And got the out, too, actually. <laughs> well, at first base. Well, and I think the umpires need to get together and talk about this because there's a little bit of confusion. Yeah, so the runner should be out at first. But they called the runner, but, originally the umpire called the runner out at third. Oh, yes. Because and, she interfered with the throw? Yep, and manager Figgy told her to come back on to third. So I think that it's going to be a little bit of communication going on to figure out what exactly. There we go. Talk it out. All of our umpires volunteering their time. Dave Byers is behind the plate tonight. So the call was runner interference with the shortstop trying to make the throw to first. But then the umpire over on that left side of the field signaled that the runner at third was out. at first. So Bosner was at third, so she has to, I think what it is is that she has to come back. Right. And yeah. so Mitchell was out because she was actually the player that was running. Okay. So there is the out call. It is runners on the corners. Bosler is at third. And Jasmine Miller is at first. Good effort by Mathis and potentially 
suicide squeeze, safety squeeze happening right there with Kaylee Hodges trying to keep the corners off balance. Just the one pitching in this game. Lexi Rocio makes the tag at second, leapt up in the air to get that runner. When Coach Figgy over at third base in the coach's box is just getting on Bosler, the runner at third, for not going on this throw. As soon as you see that throw go through and the second baseman's not there to cut it, as a runner at third base, you got to try to take home. Bosler still at third. And the throw was so high, there's yeah. no way it could have been cut. Right. But well played by Texas. I mean, if that ball for the other steal wouldn't have gotten away, that throw was in time to have made the out at second base for their first steal attempt. So... Isabel Mathis back behind the plate, has a good arm, very aggressive. Now, Texas has been one of the best defensive teams all week. They rep it constantly in practice. Lexi Rocio makes the toss and it's just a one run lead but virginia jumping ahead here in the semifinal they get the difference when you score in the first inning the winning team has scored 26 runs in the first inning the losing team has scored eight teams that score first in this tournament are 21 and 2 and virginia has a one run lead one run was all they needed to get here to the <laughs> semifinal after their quarterfinal win yesterday So Texas could really put use to put some runs on the board. We saw Raylan Van Zee struggle a little bit in the circle, and I think that would go a long way for her confidence. We'll see, though, how they fare against Kaylee Hodges. Yeah, you, you will say, though, that she was able to settle back in. It's like mm -hmm. she was able to regain the grip. She was able just to, to get things back in. The fact that Virginia only scored one run in that inning, Michelle, you and I were talking about in between innings, is a huge win and victory for Texas in itself. Oh, that was a good effort. Isabella Vera wet sliding over the, there in foul territory, trying to get this ball. Isabella's been very busy in this uh, game already early on. Slides out on that turf section of the field. Just barely out of reach. Nice effort. Peyton Richards in the box right now facing Kaylee Hodges. Kaylee Hodges made quick work of Texas the first time she saw them back in the first inning. How about that? Peyton Richards. A hit to start the second. She was three for three yesterday, seeing the ball so well. Richards from that left side has just had that mean bat, as you mentioned. Courtney, a 462 average coming into today's game and important hit to uh, to lead off the second inning, especially after Virginia put some runs up on the board. Texas going to try and counter. And it brings you to another hot hitter in Isabel Mathis, their catcher. Last two games, Mathis is three for four with two doubles and two runs scored. Nickname, Ladybug. It drops. Erica Figgy tried everything to get there. Yeah, that ball had eyes on it right off the bat. It was hit more off the end of the bat. And Erica Figgy, we have seen the type of athlete that she is all week long. She covered so much ground, laid out for it, tried her hardest to get there. But that ball just, again, that eyes is going to fall. So back-to-back -back hits to start the second inning. This is exactly what Texas needs. Addison Williams stepping in. Oh, 
playing a little small ball, trying to move up runners, productive out potentially to give up an out to gain 60 feet. Well, Edward Rocio, the Texas manager, told us Addison Williams is one of those players that will do whatever you need. She has a fantastic attitude. Also a big Baylor softball fan, guys. Yeah, their, their Little League is just minutes outside of Waco. So I'm sure a lot of these players love Baylor softball, get to go to a lot of games. Now she's a volleyball fan, too, so I'm sure she's watched a little Yassiana Presley playing for Baylor. She can certainly swing the bat. Addison Williams has it rolling to the fence. Texas is on the board. And you can make it, too. Texas has the lead. Michelle, you talked about it in the open in championship type games and a feel you're trying to make it to the championship game. You have to have those clutch plays, those clutch moments. And for Addison Williams, this was one of her moments. Two runners on, one runner in scoring position, and she's able to find a gap. Her mom had almost tears in her eyes, it looked like, of happiness for Addison Williams in that big hit. Fun. Hitting 100 coming into this game. Talk about the biggest hit of her career. Yes. A double, a two RBI double for Addison Williams. Her second hit of the World Series. Texas needed that more than ever. We need to answer back, too, after that slightly rough first inning on defense. How much bigger is their defense now, too, because they only gave up that one run to Virginia? I think we're going to go back to that in a lot in this game. And how does that feel? And, I mean, I, I have to say, I, I bet Texas has a little motivation to win this game. Of course, you want to play in the championship game, but who awaits them or awaits the winner of this game? is Oklahoma, a team that beat them twice in the regional. So you're trying to stir up some drama? Just I mean, stir in the pot. Just stir it up. A tad bit, but you know big, they want another ladle chance up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, Texas has sent six, six batters to the play. Restate is the seventh, and they've got four hits. No outs here in the top of the second. And that came back and hit her. She was still inside the box, so she'll come back. You could tell it hit the ground and then came right back up. She was in the, the front of the box, too, so you had a feeling that she was going to square around. Bill Figgy told us he was going to go with Kaylee Hodges today in the circle for Virginia. He wanted her to hold nothing back on any pitch because they have a great staff behind her if they need it. Jenna Kiefer, she was pretty solid yesterday, guys. Very solid. I wouldn't be surprised if we see her very soon. She's over there warming up. Two two to Reese Tate. It's a good moment for Kaylee Hodges to pitch in too. She's one of the younger players on this team. And she would have the opportunity to come back and play again in this little league level instead of going up to the juniors. That was big for Kaylee Hodges. First out of the inning, she needed that. It's a deep breath. Hodges has only had only pitched six innings coming into this game in the World Series, but coming into this part of the tournament, I mean, they were very even. Her and Jenna Kiefer were very even when it came to innings pitched. Out, 
And now Brindley Robinson. Talk about a hero for yesterday. Hadn't pitched in the World Series. They didn't want to burn Raylan Van Zee and use her up where she couldn't pitch today. So they asked Brindley Robinson to go in the circle and pitch. And she certainly did. Closed it out. You know, Coach Rocio said that he's always told Brindley Robinson, stay warm, keep working, your time will come, I promise. And, I mean, props to Brindley for yeah. being ready. She was ready from pitch number one. All, so many nerves, quarterfinal game, you have the lead. All you have to do is get three outs. It gets easy to let the moment get too big. She made some great defensive plays at third base. Mm -hmm. Amanda, when you watch her, she is so loose. I mean, even in timeout, she's like doing the Cupid shuffle in the circle. She just at all times is laughing and having fun out there. Cammy Walter. Virginia looking for two, and Brindley Robinson will take a seat for now. Still a runner in scoring position as we go to the number nine hitter now with two outs. Corbin Stecker Stroud. Texas taking the lead here in the top of the second inning. A two RBI double by Addison Williams, her second hit of the World Series. Good job behind the dish. Bossler getting down on her knees, keeping that ball in front. Not letting Williams advance 60 feet. swing. Sucker Stroud, a big Monica Abbott fan. Of course, we got to see her pitch for Team USA, the silver medalist from the Tokyo Games. Oh boy, a lot of Team USA uh, players that these young athletes are fans of. Same, same for us right? in the booth, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so great to see the sport back on the uh, Olympic program. And hoping it will be for 2028. Correct. Unfortunately, will not be in Paris in 2024, but still a lot of work to do internationally. A lot of softballs played internationally at the Little League level as well over in Europe and, and Asia, so continuing to grow the sport at the youth level as well as at the elite level. And we usually see some of those international Little right. League teams here, but because of COVID and safety protocols getting into the country, it is all teams domestically playing in this year's Little League Softball World Series. But that's some of the fun part is getting to meet those international teams who love the game yeah. just as much as you do. The players really look, I mean, we look forward to it, but the yeah. players really look forward to it. I mean, they like playing teams from different states, nevertheless, different countries. <laughs> exactly. Kaylee Hodges is going to win that duel with Corbin Stecker Stroud. Okay, Addison Williams, we see you. Addison Williams coming up and driving this ball all the way to the wall. Too Back under control. The pitches were getting a little out of hand, couldn't get her hand dry but studying herself, that, that's impressive. Yeah, it can be so frustrating. You're like, why is this happening to me? <laughs> everybody knows to everybody, you can kind of get embarrassed because everybody sees you throwing the ball over the catcher's head and it's like, okay, one time's okay, that's kind of embarrassing. Then two, three times, like that's happened to every pitcher. You know, you have to know out there, you're not alone when that happens. Like you're not the only person that's ever happened to. Yeah, just trying to make those adjustments, which is tough mid-game, mid-inning. 
so hard. Was there somebody that you went to? Like Raylan went to her dad? Was oh, there like your teammate, too. your dad? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'd be my dad too. Who'd you go Michelle? to, Michelle? Um <laughs> My dad didn't coach me. Dad caught for me in a while. Um I probably my coach or my catcher. Yeah, I had really good yeah. relationships with my catchers and but it is interesting that her dad catches her because he was a wrestler. So mm -hmm. he didn't play <laughs> yeah. baseball. We he have had so to many learn wrestlers. To I know. Wrestlers <laughs> is definitely <laughs> a common theme here. It's come up I, literally like four times. Yes. Five times. <laughs> yep. There's her dad. Well, that was nice. Fighting back from a 3-0 count. Couple of strikes. Easy play for Lexi Rocio. Catch all the excitement from the Little League Baseball and Softball World Series tournaments and visit the first ever virtual fan zone experience. Visit littleleague.org slash fan zone. We're so lucky that player parents and family members were able to come out and watch their young ladies play here in the Little League Softball World Series, something we didn't have the chance to do last year. I know we were all devastated. We weren't going to work it because it wasn't happening. I can't imagine not being able to play. I know. Getting the news and just seemed like one thing after another last year. And just want to play with your friends and represent your community and play the game that you love. And that got taken away last year. But I think, and you could see it in the Women's College World Series, and I think that we've seen it this year too. Every game, just it just feels like it means more. More emotions and the level of play has been so good this year. Well, it's so easy to take things for granted, right? Until they're taken away. And I, so I think you know a lot of these athletes all, at all levels, right? Collegiate, professional, are like, wow, I just love being back on the field. You play with a renewed passion. Tammy Walter with a big cut, and Raylan Van Z will get her first strikeout. Emma Van Z working back from a 3-0 count to the first batter induces a pop-up and now comes back with a strikeout. This inning could have been completely different if she had walked the leadoff batter. She doesn't. She battles back. Two big outs up on the board. Nobody on base. And manager Bill Figgy is going to go ahead and make the substitution. We do have mandatory play, which is great. It means that every player is at least going to get one at bat in this game. And so Virginia will send in Jordan Jefferson to bat in the eighth spot. Jordan Jefferson, a newer face to softball. Her dad retired military. They moved uh, from Texas, ironically. And here she is playing for Virginia. She's played for a lot of different teams, but they really like her potential, and she loves the game. Loves it. Favorite athlete, Odyssey Alexander. Same. <laughs> so many players' favorite athlete. How could you not love Odyssey after that play at the mm. World Series? Epic performance for JMU. So Virginia, obviously. A lot of those athletes are very familiar with that James Madison University program. Yeah, a lot of them put down on their questionnaires. They're big Odyssey Alexander fans and also big JMU softball fans. Yeah, this is the play we're talking about from the Women's College World Series, Odyssey Alexander. The play at the plate. The play. You guys, I was calling this game, and when that happened, I just could not believe it. I was sitting in right field, and I was stunned. <laughs> oh, yeah. my gosh. And that was such a good game, too. I think everybody knew the name Odyssey Alexander after that. Yes. If they didn't yep. know from what she did in regionals, or super regionals, 
they knew at the World Series. We're not sure what's going on right now. The home plate umpire is on the red phone, which usually they use to call in substitutions. Edward Rocio came out and spoke with him. <laughs> Looking at the players, having a good time. Players have certainly learned how to get through a delay. We've had a lot of weather delays, so. Always dancing. I was thinking they were questioning how you can make a substitution for a player that hasn't batted yet. And you are allowed to replace a player that you put in your starting lineup. They'll have to come back in and finish right. their mandatory play requirements. But that is allowed, and we've seen Bill Figgy do that most of this tournament. He'll sub early at the bottom of the lineup. Ball and two strikes to Jordan Jefferson. Now, Raylan Van Zee will get her. Van Zee with a couple of Ks in the second. What a rebound for her. And Texas still has a one-run lead. Team from Texas compete. And then just four years later, here she is getting to live out her dream. I mean, just checking one goal off after another, huh? That's all she does. What a week. I know. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. A lot of young ladies out there watch this tournament and have dreams of appearing on the field and putting that patch on their arm and playing Little League softball. And a lot of these Texas girls have seen Texas dominate in yeah. this Little League Softball World Series. I mean, if this Texas team were to advance and go on to win it all, they would be the 14th team from Texas to win the World Series. It was fun to talk to Lexi Rocio and her dad, too. Um, he said, you know, there's there's moments where we butt heads, but what <laughs> yeah. father-daughter doesn't? She makes some great plays at shortstop. I still can't get over that triple play. I was thinking about it last night and this morning. Well, and remember, she he told us that she wanted to hit a home run for him, for her dad. I love that. And so at the beginning of the World Series, she was pressing a little bit, trying to hit a home run. And so they ended up having a chat. Girouette makes the play. And she ended up getting more hits. And a home run came after that little chat where she wasn't pressing, wasn't trying to hit one out. And he's like, that's usually how it happens, right? Like, think back to your other home runs that you hit. You never hit home runs when you're trying to hit home <laughs> yeah. runs, right? Because you overswing and you get under the ball. So he told her, just cut the ball in half. Simplify it, right? He makes everything a very simplified manner. And, and, and he even does that with the defense. And he says, hey, Defense wins championships. He goes, and I can't remember where I got that. I don't know if it was from football. Yeah. But he's like, <laughs> it, was, it was cute. But it does. It does. And when you have a good pitcher in the circle and you have a really sound defensive team, which he does, you put zeros up on the board. You can't lose, right? You can't lose a zero-zero game. You may not win it, yeah. but you can't lose it. And so their offense obviously has come through as well for him. So this is a very complete Texas team and with a mindset and a motto that, you know, pitching and defense are going to help keep us in the game and, and – until our bats come through. And Edward Rocio, the manager, has so much experience in Little League. Started coaching age 23, coached his younger brother in Little League, and now coaching his kids in Little League. Raylan Van Zee to the fence it goes! Raylan Van Zee with a double! <laughs> she has to be so excited, finally. 
One is able to find a hole out there and finds it in a big way. She crushed this ball to left center field and because it went all the way to the fence, she's able to leg it out for extra bases. That is her second hit of the World Series. Um, and guess who the first one was against? That would be Virginia. Different pitcher though. Remember, they didn't see Kaylee Hodges. But that batting average just doesn't reflect her at bats and how hard that she's hit some balls. Yes. She has not had any luck. And now you want Addison Young up, has more hits than anyone in the World Series, reached base in 10 of her 19 plate appearances. Addison Young, excuse me, is tough. She has grown up on a farm, has calluses on her hands because of just the hard work that she puts in on the farm. A couple of farmers' daughters on this team, and Haven Hansen as well. well. I love that her favorite animal is a goat. Yeah. A pet goat, maybe <laughs> a goat that she <laughs> raises. <laughs> you gotta love that. Yeah, she raises show goats. Yeah. Wonder what did I say? Nah, yeah. Nah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was bad. All right, is that, that your bad. joke of the game? <laughs> that was my joke of the game. <laughs> we'll have our joke of the game coming up. Chris Button doesn't disappoint. <laughs> I don't know if it will be goat worthy, but oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, 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 off the glove of Virouette. And Addison Young takes two. Two in scoring position for Texas. How about Addison Young? An 0-2 pitch, fouling off pitches, a changeup. She just ropes it right down the line, gets that onto the green. Really good job by Vanzi to hold up at third. I love the fact that Addison Young is going to see that there's a little bit of a distraction at third base and easily comes into second. Not be disappointed, okay? All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put her on, okay, to load the bases so that we have a force out. Hey, guys, there's a lot of game left. We hit great in warm-ups. We're going to hit, okay? But we got to stop them here, and we just got to stay down the ball, not worry about what's happened. We're going to focus on the now. We're going to put her on. Infield's going to come in a little, stay down on the ball. Good throw to Azen. You look one. Be sure you're covering, okay? All right. Let's get the out here. It's one out. All right. Let's go. All right. Y'all ready? Love the moment. Let's go. Yep. Blue, we're going to put her on. Yep. Bill Figgy saying they are going to intentionally walk Peyton Richards. You do not have to throw the pitches in Little League. You can just tell the umpire. So they will do that and load the bases. By the way, guys, Addison Young, 10 hits now in the World yeah. Series. Wow. That was a great at bat. She's at second single and then advanced to second on the throw. Isabel Mathis, the catcher. She has a single and a run scored tonight. You know, second time through the order, Texas is a really good off. I mean, normally they're a really good offense, but there's just something about second time through the order for them that things just really start to click even more against the same pitcher, getting to see her twice. Make great adjustments. And you can tell, too, like those two pitches that Mathis just took, those are good pitches. They're close pitches, but because they've already seen 45 pitches out of the hand of Hodges, then they start to really make adjustments and know what she's trying to do, know how her ball is going to spin and finish. Three balls to Isabel Mathis. Here comes the first strike to her by Kaylee Hodges. I like that take by Mathis, not trying to get too greedy, put pressure on Hodges to make a pitch there. Pressure's on her.
count runs full with the bases juiced. Texas is two for five with runners in scoring position. Their top six batters have a hit, including Isabel Mathis. She's in the five spot. And that walks in a run. Isabel Mathis did not go around. A run comes across. Texas up 3-1. Close. Very close. It back fast. Well, good hold by the catcher. Oslin trying to get the call. Now back to a playmaker tonight. Addison Williams had her second hit of the World Series in the second inning. A two RBI double to give Texas the lead. And her first RBIs of the World Series. Couldn't have come at a bigger time. People were so happy for her. Her teammates were happy. Her parents were thrilled. Nicole's foul. Yeah, the reaction from the manager, Edward Rocio, that was awesome. Gave her a big old hug. Now it's Kaylee Hodges who's ahead 0-2 on Addison Williams. <laughs> Throw at the plate to keep the run from scoring. Good job by Hodges to throw the pitch and go get this going off to her glove side. Good turn right back, bullet throw to Bostler, the catcher for the force out. Base is still loaded for Reese Tate, but two outs now. A good spot there by Hodges. I would have wanted that spot. That pitch yeah. so bad called for a strike. Yeah, the zone's been a little tight tonight. Yeah, good for Texas, you know, knowing that, watching yes. pitches, being aggressive, letting pitches go that are potentially close and trying to attack the ones that are a little bit sweeter, a little bit more down the middle. And another run will come home via the walk. And Bill Figgy back out to the circle. Hey, don't say anything about the zone. We'll catch that up later. Hey, super proud of you. You did the best you could. Hey, you worked hard. You got this, okay? All right, I'm gonna bring Jenna in. Teammate, she's got your back, just like you've had her back all year, okay? She's gonna help us here, okay? All right, I'm proud of you. I'm just gonna take you out right now. Go take a seat, relax, and um, we got this, okay? She's gonna have you back, okay? They got you back, okay? All right, Jenna. Okay. We will have a pitching change for Virginia. Jenna Kiefer coming to the circle. We'll step aside. He had a game with 14 strikeouts. The first game, actually, she just looks so comfortable and composed and been a leader for this Virginia team. Well, and through 2.2 innings against Texas, right? Yes. yes. That first start, four strikeouts. And so 
I think there was a lot of, I thought she was probably going to start this game because yeah. she was so successful against Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bill Figge told us today he went with Kaylee Hodges or was going to go with Kaylee Hodges because Texas had not seen her knowing that he had Jenna Kiefer behind her. Brindley Robinson grabbed that ball, dropped it in a perfect spot. One run across. Can they get two? Tag at the plate is applied by Bossler. Oh, and Addison Williams slow to get up at the plate. Another great defensive play by Virginia's time at the plate to keep another run from scoring. Can they take this momentum to their backs to score some runs? This last time she was out there. Well, she settled in nicely after a start where a couple of pitches got away from her but you know that's the mentality it takes right the championship mentality to be able to respond and know things might not be going your way to have faith turn things around rely on your teammates trust that there's lots of game left i think i even saw her crack a smile yeah. <laughs> well, which she doesn't do very yeah, often. She's got a the she's got hit pretty good probably game helped yeah, her crack yeah, so true. <laughs> so true. She was the one that got that rally started in the third inning. Yeah, had a, a double. double. Yes. Her first double of the tournament, second hit of the tournament. And this is Isabella Virouette, the third baseman. Virginia only was able to bring across one run in their quarterfinal win against New Jersey. We saw great pitching. Alyssa O'Neill for New Jersey against Jenna Kiefer of Virginia. It was just a battle. Leah O'Neill, excuse me. Raylan Van Z just stuck her hand up for out number one. Top of the order to Erica Figgy. And sometimes, guys, you just got to you gotta get Figgy with it. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> that means you juggle. Oh, this is good. This is impressive. <laughs> I think she was singing Ooh. at the same time. Oh, and then Pops comes in. Yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Man. Can you juggle? So cool. No, can you? Uh, I can juggle two things. Yep. Juggling? <laughs> <laughs> no. Juggling. Is that it's juggling? It doesn't count, does it? Um, yeah. I can actually juggle two things in one hand, but if I have to incorporate the third thing in the other hand, it gets a little messy. <laughs> <laughs> Easily gets messy. It's hard. Are the two in your left hand? Because you just said in your right. Yeah, I, I'm actually more dexterous at times with my right hand. Huh. Even though I'm left-handed, it's a little strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a right-handed world, you know, so we have yep. to adapt. Oh. Little violin is coming out, I know. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Bill Figge did tell us that Erica was so competitive that when he, because he knew how to juggle, she had to also then know oh. how to juggle. So I can see that. This Virginia team came through the regional. They defeated the defending Little League softball champions, the Rowan Little League, the North Carolina team in their regional championship. Oh, that was nice. Erica Figgy, yes. Great contact. She's such a determined young lady. You can tell that she's serious about softball. You can tell that she doesn't let the game 
go too fast. She takes it one pitch at a time and just does whatever she can to help out her team defensively and offensively. Nice pitch on the outside corner. That ball well located, great movement. And then Vanzi really starting to hone those pitches. Facing Bossler. Well, and it's just now that Virginia is getting their second at bats and looks off of her. Mm -hmm. So right. they have a chance now to make some adjustments. They know that she's going to work that curveball in the outside corner to them. It has really good spin, late break. First time around when they met in pool play, Virginia had eight hits off of Raylan Van Z, but also struck out eight times. And there's a strikeout by Bossler. Up next, Kaylee Mitchell. If you ever see some bucket hats in the stands from a Virginia game, well, that would be uh, Kaylee Mitchell's doing. She has a lucky bucket hat, so sometimes you see some fans wearing those. Kaylee Mitchell just crushed that one. That was a laser to center field right in front of Haven Hansen. Mitchell, good job of hitting when she was behind in the count. Let's that ball get deep, drives it right back up the middle. Really pretty swing, barrels that up, dumps it out onto the green. Really good play, how about by Texas? Almost trying to get the force out at second base. This Texas team just so skilled defensively. That was Haven Hansen out in center field. Yeah. She's a player. She's the one that got that big hit in the seventh inning last night. So here's Jasmine Miller. She reached on a fielder's choice. That was when they had the interference call, the runner interference call back in the first inning. Erica Figgy and Kaylee Mitchell on right now. They've got three of Virginia's four hits. You know, it's a good thing too, if you're in Texas shoes, about having a four run lead or you've scored five runs and feeling good about your offense is that Rayland can just go out there and throw strikes. You know, when you have a four run lead, you don't you want to keep it, but if you give up one run here, it's not the end of the world. Two runs, still not the end of the world. You can go out and attack the strike zone. Make them put the ball in play and let your defense work. And this defense does work. Oh, very well. <laughs> and very hard. Yeah. Work, 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 work. Only three errors <laughs> that they've made. Triple play. Oh, well, they're one Double tonight, plays. so four. It's in foul territory. They'll try to get there. Peyton Richards with the hustle. Yeah, that's a tricky play because you're having to work around the camera well down there. There wasn't really a direct path. There's not a camera well at the practice field? <laughs> that fly <laughs> ball. <laughs> you're worried about it, had to move around it. If not, she could have taken a more direct route to it. Well, I guess we'll take the blame for that one, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Runners advance. Two in scoring position for Jasmine Miller.
And that walk will load the bases. This is the life that Virginia needs. Well, we mentioned it earlier. Championship play, it's all about the timing, the timely hit, or the big pitch. And so this will be Jenna Kiefer up. She entered to pitch in the last inning for Kaylee Hodges. for looking for her first hit at the World Series. What a great time this would be. Popping up with she authority. Is, she is staring down runners. Don't you dare. Think about coming. <laughs> it's a great take. A 1 1, I mean, that is the difference between a 1 2 count or a 2 1 count. That is such a big take right there to get yourself into a hitter's count. Versus if she would have swung, gone for it, fouled it off, then it would have been a pitcher's count. I see Lexi Rocio coming over to talk to Raylan Van Zee. A big smile on Lexi's face. Two, two, there you go. Van Zee comes back at her. That's a big pitch for Van Zee. These next couple pitches at a 2-2 count. This is where you want to be as a pitcher. You want to come in on the corner here. You don't want to work too far out of the zone and Go to a 3-2 count with the bases loaded. So this is a really big pitch for Vanzi. And just let her defense work. Yeah, that's a good point, Amanda, because a lot of times young pitchers will think, oh, I need to strike this batter out in this situation. So then you put the ball too close to the zone, and typically you give up a bigger hit in that situation. Just work the edges let your and think, let my defense do the work because you're usually a little more precise. You're not trying to throw the strike that sometimes becomes the miss that becomes the big hit. Or you strike her out. There you go. <laughs> Either works, right? <laughs> Raylan Van Zee got her strikeout number four. Raylan Van Zee, bases loaded. That's all right. I'm going to come back with this 2-2 two -two pitch, and I'm going to put it right down the middle for the biggest strikeout of my career. Softball World Series semifinal. Texas and Virginia, and Texas on top. Five to one. Winner will get Oklahoma in the championship game. Sometimes, even though you're at the ballpark, you got to watch it on your iPad. <laughs> I love those. I love the earphones. <laughs> Does that come in an announcer headset too? Oh Can we get gosh, a microphone that'd be added? Amazing. I'm just imagining Michelle on an airplane <laughs> wearing those, uh, just sitting on a plane. If they're noise yeah. canceling, I'm buying them. <laughs> Well, the Texas bats have come alive. They've made some good adjustments. Virginia has had to switch pitchers, and they've done whatever it takes, meanwhile, at this week at the Little League Softball World Series. They set up cages in the hotel parking lot to make sure they got their swings in. <laughs> you know, with all the different COVID procedures, it just limits their ability to go out in the public as much, maybe find an indoor facility that they could hit at. So they just put up some bonnets in their parking lot. They did this. Uh, actually in Waco, too, for the regional. They are very serious, Michelle, about their offense and being able to get in those reps no matter what. Yeah, it's extra cuts. It makes you uh, 
you know, become more familiar with your swing. And you know, it's, a lot of times people think, well, you, I, I need a net or I need a tee in order to hit. And you don't. Just even shadow swings are so important just to really smooth out little kinks. What about even swinging in front of a mirror? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hold on to the bat. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, careful. Yeah. Well, we would Seven always. years, bad luck. In Japan, we would always do it just in a mir uh, the, the mirror, or the reflection of a window. Yes. You know, so you, we'd swing outside the hotel in the parking lot. And see yourself. Lobby, yep. There's the lobby windows so that you could see yourself. Haven Hansen has subbed in, and she will hit in the nine spot for Texas, who's got a four-run lead. Seven hits on the evening. Texas has had six or more hits every game of the World Series. Love when we talked to Coach Rocio about Haven Hansen, who had that big hit last night. What he said about Haven, just her love for the game, just smallest, biggest package you'll ever have. Very, very quiet, rarely strikes out, and she's another one of those country farm girls on this team. Yeah, Haven Hansen and Addison Young have been friends since they were two. What is it about the smallest girls have had the biggest plays this week? Three, I know. They're mighty. Oh! Green catch, Erica Figgy! Web gym. <laughs> Erica Figgy getting it done. Well, we know she can juggle, but she can also lay out in the gap. This ball hit very well by Haven Hansen, but Figgy is like, uh-uh, that is not going to the wall. Look at the way she has a great jump on it, cuts it down, lays out. Really good catch. So beautiful. She's such a good athlete. And Haven Hansen, I mean, again, connecting and putting the ball in play, almost had a hit there. Yeah, she made Erica Figgy work hard for that catch. Top of the order is Lexi Rocio. Yeah, that, I think that might have a potential for a sports center uh, top 10, maybe. Oh, I think so. You guys, yes. can we talk about the defense that we have seen? Every so day. Many plays at the play, yeah. <laughs> triple play, double plays yep. galore, diving plays. I mean, we've seen it all. Love every second of it. They're just the moments that make you go, wow. Yep. No hesitation either. Figgy's like, yep. Hit the gas. I'm going. Just foul. Well, I think it's also the trickle down effect. You know, all these girls watch the Women's College World Series. They see all these games on ESPN and they're like, I I want to do that. Wait, wait, I can do that. I'm going to work on it, right? You see it, and, and that's really part of the belief system. You see other athletes doing it, and you believe that you can do it. You go out there, and you work on your skills, and you know, we're starting to see that level of play really trickle down to these younger athletes. Well, and we think that the players in the Women's College World Series are role models as well as the Olympics that we just saw, but these girls are role models for another generation of younger players who are watching them at home, in their living rooms, maybe even picking up their bat, taking some swings, wanting to be just like them. Which actually happened. Sent in this tweet Rodney White did taking some swings while watching the Little League World Series, yeah, wanting to be like these young girls. Pretty cool. Wow. So cool. And these girls for Texas, they've watched other Little Leagues from Texas come to the Women's College World Series. We had North Carolina who watched their Rowan Little League win it not once but twice. I mean, they have seen girls come before them, older sisters, too. Raylan Van Zee had that double and a run scored in the third inning. She would love to help out Lexi Rocio right now at first.
It was Kaylee Hodges who got the start in this game for Virginia in the circle. Jenna Kiefer came in in relief in the third inning. First time that Raylan Van Zee is seeing Kiefer in this game. Saw her pretty well. A walk and a hit and two are on. Back to back at bats with hits now for Raylan Van Zee. Little bit out in front of this pitch, just a tad, but she's able to drive it enough to the outfield to find a way to get on. Every run counts right now in the semifinal. You want to be able to extend your lead knowing that the championship game is at stake. Yeah, Raylan Van Zee, just two, just one hit coming into today, has two hits tonight. Well, you, you want to get hot at the right time, and <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is it. I mean, think about Texas, as good as they have done offensively. If they can get Van Z really firing on all cylinders, yeah. which she is starting to do here in the semifinal, they do end up winning this game. They're going to need all cylinders to be filing, firing against Oklahoma. Madison Young in there battling, had the single in the third. So many foul balls mm. in this game, right? Yeah, <laughs> Is it just me? No, a no. lot, a lot. Being very aggressive and anything that's close to the zone, they're attacking. Watching pitches, good pitch selection. Well, Bossler charging towards the circle. Lexi Rocio is the one at second. She was staring down. You think about whoever wins this game awaits to play Oklahoma, and that Oklahoma offense has just been the best one that we've seen here up to this point. So whoever faces them is going to have to outpace them. They're going to have yeah. to outscore them. Oklahoma is going to put up a lot of runs on the board. See one in offense that is going to that game feeling good, feeling like they're grabbing momentum, feeling like one through nine, they're executing, putting the ball in play, seeing good pitches. Yeah, Oklahoma is the only team hitting over 300. Put up seven runs today. And Texas is close, hitting 298 coming into this game, and they have eight hits tonight. So potentially, if they hold on to this lead, maybe their batting average would be over 300. Jasmine Miller over for the grab. Lexi Rocio will stay put at second. Now to Peyton Richards, who has a single. They put her on intentionally in the third to load the bases. Her first look at Jenna Kiefer tonight. You know who seemed just like a natural ball player to me? Peyton Richards. The way that she throws, her swing, everything is really smooth. Really good softball IQ. Good pop in her bat, too. And three for three last night in the quarterfinals. She does a little bit of everything, too, Amanda. Not just softball, a little basketball, a little track, a little shot put and discus. This is the age to do all those other sports for sure. Yes. I like it when you're playing multiple sports. I watched the discus and the hammer throw in the Olympics. It was very intense. <laughs> it <Yeah>. is intense. <laughs> <laughs> they throw heavy objects a long way. <laughs> <laughs> or put them. Yes, they do. Yeah. Some are thrown, some are put in. 
Hey, Jenna Kiefer's got her first strikeout tonight. Texas will leave a couple on, but they've got a four-run lead. How about a championship game tomorrow night at 5 Eastern? Savannah Wright will step in in the sixth spot in the batting order, facing Raylan Van Zee, who has four strikeouts in her last eight batters that she's faced. It, it seems like it's been a while since she's pitched, too. That last half inning just seemed mm. really long, and and actually Texas came away with no runs, and it still seemed like that last inning took forever. A lot of foul balls. Texas is seeing it well. Yes. They're hitting very well. And I'm interested to see how it affects Raylan Van Zee. Starts out now with a 2-0 count. A couple of pitches that weren't close to being called strikes. And right, helping her out there. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Close just, your eyes. He centers herself. And then takes the same pitch. So that's good. Good job. Right, making the adjustment. Savannah Wright has put some so much extra work into her hitting before coming to this World Series, working on that swing. And now she's going to take her base. We will have the series finale between the Red Sox and the Yankees Wednesday night at 7 Eastern from the Bronx on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and of course, the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Uh, is that new? I feel like I've not heard that before. Full tagline? Yeah. One app, one tap. That's you know, catchy. the song. Is There's a commercial for it. <laughs> And know that. Let me tell you about this channel called ESPN. No, I knew why. <laughs> <laughs> Scouts honor, I promise. I think it's like one app, one tap. That's a fact. Like oh. that kind of thing, you know? Wow, that was good. And then they, yeah, it's fun. It's fun, a little catchy. <laughs> I use the app this week to watch all these pool play games. Mm -hmm. Super helpful. Yes, me too. This is Trista Davis. Substitution for Virginia. Wondering if at this point maybe the ball is, is feeling a little damp, Michelle. I remember last night, whenever it got dark and we saw pitchers struggle with their grip. Yeah. High into the glove of Van C. Oh, Lexi Rocio uh, not able to make the play, but still she keeps that ball from going out to center field. Oh, yeah, that's probably a play where Van Z needs to go to first to get the out. This high hop is a slow developing play. So what happens is this is the right thought. I want to get the lead runner. And maybe if the throw is online, maybe she gets her. I don't know. It's still kind of tight. I think when you have a four run lead, though, Probably make sure you get the out to try to keep this from happening. No outs, and now runners at first and second. And Aaliyah Myers steps in the box. Myers looking for that first hit. No outs for Virginia here. Does her job, though, to in scoring position, thanks to Aaliyah Myers. I like that. It's a good decision. Play a little small ball. Move your both runners into scoring position. Got to be careful how many outs you give up now. Coming here into the bottom of the fourth. I think that's productive, right? You move... Move yourself in, yeah, to a position. You know, one big hit will cut the lead in half. Aislin Long. 
Well, she was subbed in last night and drew a walk in a key time. As Virginia was trying to get something offensively going. When offense coming at a premium, only were able to score one run in their quarterfinal, but that proved to be enough. Opportunity for Long just maybe to hit a ground ball to the right side of the field to second base. Runner at third, less than two outs. She could be running on ball that's on the ground, and Van Z loves to throw her curveball to that side like that. Makes it a little bit easier to hit the ball to the right side. Now we've seen the pitchers try to dry their hands off, but Aislinn Long trying to dry hers off too. It's humid. Yeah, and then even the grass starts to get wet as well. Yeah, and even the dirt, you can see the moisture in the yes. dirt, how dark it looks. So true. It's a good swing there by Long. Aislinn Long plays all kinds of sports, cross-country, track, swimming, basketball, and also makes a uh, pretty good banana bread, according to her questionnaire. And she's going to try to wipe her hands off. Put some gloves on. How about that? Yeah. Getting a little better grip. Just that moisture that starts to collect in the air. It starts to collect on the ground. There was a lot of moisture on the ground last night when we were walking to our car yeah. after the game. Oh, our producer, Chris Damiani, coming in 77% humidity. Lovely. And a run comes across from Virginia. Brindley Robinson and Lexi Rocio both went for it. Long over at first. You guys, this is going to be Long's first hit of the World Series. All she needed to do was put the ball in play, and she did. Fouled one off to get to this pitch. Really worked within that at bat to make adjustments and just be able to make contact, to put pressure on Texas to make a play. Big time. You bring a run across. Now just a three-run lead for Texas. You've got runners on the corners with one out and the top of the order coming up, Erica Figgy, who has reached twice. And so they rolled out an E6. I know. They did change the ruling, though. Started as a single, changed it to an error. Either way, I, you know Long is just happy that she got a run across. And there's still time. We go six innings. With Erica Figgy up, who came in to this game hitting 778, the best batting average in the World Series. Mm. Well, that's the third error of the game for Texas, a team that has only had three errors in this entire tournament. And, and actually, I think that play gets made if they communicate a little bit better. To me, that was more of a mental error on the lack of communication between Robinson and Rocio. Not really saying, all right, who's taking control of this ball? Who's going to the bag? But that happens. Sometimes you get in intense environment. Everybody wants the ball. Everybody wants to make the out. You end up forgetting to talk to your teammate about who's actually doing what. Is that the shortstop's ball in that? I, I, I think so. I, I mean, any time a third baseman can cut it off, but I think that one was probably a little bit too far up the middle.
And the parents sweating it out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Base is loaded. Erica Figgy is on via the walk. Because I, I don't think that that was the worst walk there. No, I, mean, I agree. Figgy by far is their best hitter, and Edward Rocio is going to call timeout to talk over this defensive situation with Texas. But I think Figgy has just seen the ball so big. and. Hey, corners, corners are going home, okay? Corners are coming home. Be ready, of force. Hard to you, okay? 4-1, one, one. Four, four, one. okay? 4-1. Four, we got this. In the middle, let's roll and get out of this, okay? Hey, we're putting ourselves in tight situations, okay, that don't need to be. We're giving away free bases, okay? Let's pound the strike zone. You got a defense, okay? Pound the strike zone. Trust the defense here, okay? Pound the strike zone. Work ahead, okay? Work ahead. Ready? Yes, sir. Thank right. you. Let's go to work. Both runs that Virginia has scored in this game has been from leadoff walks, and that just seems to be a common theme that yeah. we've seen in the quarterfinals and also the semifinals. Those leadoff walks, Michelle, always come around to get you. Well, and uncharacteristically, Texas usually is in more control in the circle, right? Not as many walks and better defense. So yes. the two things they've relied on, the pitching and the defense, have faltered here a little bit, but they have been able to put those five runs up on the board. They're going to need their defense right now, though. Aislinn Bossler, and it's still rolling in right field. Two-run score. A trio of runs off the bat of Aislinn Bossler. It's electric in Greenville right now. Aislinn Bossler gets it done when it's needed. It's timely hitting. It's championship ball. Pitch on the outside corner and just drives it to the outfield. It gets past the outfielders, and it is going to clear the bases. Really good job by Virginia to be timely. Three big runs up on the board, tying this game. What a moment for Virginia and Aislinn Bossler, their catcher. She crushed that ball. So it's going to be a hit and an error. Fourth error of the game for Texas. Oh, how things have changed. So Kaylee, fast. Wow, Kaylee Mitchell at the plate now, and we're tied. I remember this is the team that has magic grapes. Well, Coach Figgy said, I need those magic grapes to rub up on our bats. I need some magic out of our hitting. Even told the girls, hey, if it helps, put the bat under your pillow. Maybe you'll wake up. Maybe you'll get hot. Yeah, sleep with it, warm it up. That's what he told him yesterday. They needed some more <laughs> offense, and they just found it in the fourth inning. Get those magic grapes going. The dugout after Bossler got that hit. Just so <laughs> excited. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That's what it's all about right there. <laughs> and you know what the best is, is when you watch Major League Baseball or Women's College World Series or the Olympics and you see those athletes looking exactly like the yeah. little leaguers right there. Yeah. 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 That's so passion. That's, that's what it's all about. This Virginia team has just had so much fight, you guys. I don't know if it's grapes, grapes, oh, grapes. or what. but grapes. Magic. Magic grapes. Thanks to Kaylee Hodges' parents. They give those to the team before every game. We saw... <laughs> Bill Figgy eating his before the game. Y'all, the parents are just as excited. I'm not kidding you. Like, my seat is shaking because <laughs> of how much these parents are cheering and jumping up and down. What about now? What about now? The bats are alive for Virginia. Kaylee Mitchell. She's still going all the way around.
Haley Mitchell got so much of this pitch. I thought for a second it had a chance to get out of here over Hanson's head, and they try to hit the relay to bring it in. It looked like they had a chance to get her at third, which we've seen this Texas defense step up and make these plays, but it gets behind Robinson, and even worse, Robinson... Excuse me, Van Z fell on that play, landed on her backside, and I'm hoping that she's okay, but an incredible hustle by Kaylee Mitchell to make her way all the way around the bases, and now Virginia has scored six runs in this inning. So they rule it a triple E5. Texas with three errors in this inning, four for the game. That one into the glove of Young at second. Something has just changed for Virginia. What a difference one inning makes. Six runs now. They trailed five to one. They've let Texas help them a little bit. The leadoff walk, a couple of errors, and the big hits with runners in scoring position. And three errors in the city, Michelle. Five on the game. Another one scooped by Addison Young. Texas came into this inning with a four-run lead. Now they're down by two. Virginia rocking. Massive offensive inning and a response for Virginia's offense. They put six runs on the board and they grab the lead. They're up by two. The Magic great. Great scene for the 2021 Little League Softball World Series. Okay, can you believe the inning we just saw from the Virginia offense? <laughs> wow. <No. laughs> Incredible. Virginia just scored six runs on two hits, two walks, three errors. This is the most runs that Virginia has scored in a game in this World Series. Their previous high was four. Isabel Mathis leading off for Texas. Bill Figgy told his team, sleep with your bat. Warm it up. Did you ever do anything like that? I did. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> Always heard people talk about it, like folklore, but I didn't know people did it. <laughs> hey now, I think that was a, I think that was a dig. It. <laughs> it's up with my glove too. Okay, does that count? <laughs> and my cleats were like right outside my bed, oh. just, the just in case. Yes. Just slip them on once yeah. you get right out of bed. Brush your teeth with them on. Yep. <laughs> Look, if you're Texas, though, you give up six runs in that inning, but but you're down two. That's manageable. No, no, absolutely. And it's just so important not to press, to to feel like the next hitter who comes up, if you're Mathis, that you have to win the game right here with this at bat. If you're Texas, everybody has to stay up. Everybody has to continue to believe and know that you have a great offensive approach and can score runs fast, too. Oh, and that's the one thing that Texas is going to have to do is pick good pitches, yeah. right? They're now starting to chase out of the zone, which is very easy to do, right? We talked about yes. that earlier with Virginia. They were chasing pitches out of the zone. They got collected. They started just swinging at, at strikes, letting the balls go. Well, that's exactly what Texas is going to have to do. They're going to have to be disciplined, attack strikes. And it's hard, too, because Kiefer has such a good changeup. Yeah. So that, to me, is the equalizer for her to be able to finish out this game and try to keep this lead. Is that pitch. Isabel Mathis skies it. And Cami Walter underneath it.
Now, Jenna Kiefer entered this game in the third inning, has only given up a couple of hits. Walked one, struck out one. This is Abigail Sepovida at the plate. Back to Walter. And how about the positioning? That is outstanding. That pitch on the inside corner, first pitch swinging. But Cammy Walter playing up the middle. That ball looks like it potentially could be a base hit back up the middle. But because of her positioning, she scoops it up. Routine play over at first. Journey Patterson will get her first time to face Jenna Kiefer with two down. Winner gets Oklahoma in the championship game tomorrow. Now you know that Oklahoma is ready too. I mean, the Oklahoma Little League offense looked like the Oklahoma yeah. college <laughs> offense Boomer that we Sooner. saw this spring. That's what they reminded me of. Just be inspired by the offense that they had this spring. Now, Oklahoma with a 7 nothing win earlier today in their semifinal against Missouri. Kind of surprised that we didn't see more from that Missouri team who was so good. The biggest surprise is the amount of errors that Texas had in that inning. There was only one earned run in that inning. Six, six unearned for the game. One earned run also for the game. Well, that's at this age group. I think that's one of the hardest things as a coach, as a player, is how do you keep all the wheels from falling off the cart, yes. right? One can fall off. That's fine, and you can recover. <laughs> but when all four, four fall off, it's, yeah. it's really hard to go anywhere, right? So, so that's the thing. How do you stop things from snowballing? I think that's the hardest thing for young athletes to learn. Nice swing by Journey Patterson there is to find a way to get on base. It's important right now with where Texas is at in their lineup. She just hit in the seven hole. You want the top of the order to be able to get back up in this game. And it'll be Brindley Robinson coming up in the eighth spot. Robinson's caught a nice swing. She was the first one to see Jenna Kiefer tonight when she came in in the third inning. Promptly delivered a base hit to the outfield, picked up an RBI. Yeah, three RBIs now for Brenly Robinson in the World Series. A couple of hits. Erica Figgy calling everybody off. An easy grab for her to make. And Virginia still enjoying this two there in the championship at the 2021 Little League Softball World Series here in Greenville, North Carolina. It has been a fun one. Such great oh. games, y'all. Yes. So many big moments. We've seen no hitters. And this has been an uncharacteristically sloppy game. Most of the games have been yes. very clean here. So really good know. pitching. Not a lot of walks. Not a lot of errors. So we're kind of getting a, a little bit. Yeah, it's the end of the week, too. Both of these clubs are a little tired. And, you know, I think the sloppy play could be a, a combination of things. But yeah, it has been an amazing week. Mm. I started with 10 teams last Wednesday. They each played four pool play games with one day off. And then the quarterfinals started up yesterday with eight teams. I 
And it was Savannah Wright who got that inning going in the bottom of the fourth inning whenever Virginia scored those six runs. She had a leadoff walk, made good adjustments within her at bat, chased a pitch, and then ended up taking pitches that were like it later in the count to draw that walk. And remember, it was that fielder's choice. That ball hit back to Van Z. She went to second instead yes. of going to first to pick up that out. That really changed the complexity of that so inning. True. Yeah, so true. Texas has just got to show that good pitching and defense, get out of this inning, and move on to the six and get the bats going. Three balls and a strike to Savannah Wright. Another walk for Wright. Well, you can find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. They're doing that right now at the official handles at Little League. Follow the action and join in the conversation. Hashtag LLWS. If you follow Little League, they've got some of the best moments. That triple play that Texas turned, it ended up being a Sports Center top 10 play. It was number two today. Cami Walter moves the runner. Every run just so critical right now. Good execution there by Walter to lay down that bunt mm -hmm. to advance a runner in scoring position. If you could go up by even three runs, you're feeling a, even a little bit better about your lead. Back to Aaliyah Myers. It was a monster inning for Virginia in the fourth. Six runs on two hits. Texas had three errors in the field, and they walked two batters. Raylan Van Z with the strikeout looking. Van Z is able to get the very bottom of the strike zone and get the call to go her way, and she needed this, especially after giving up that leadoff walk. Five strikeouts now for Raylan Van Zee. She came in leading the World Series in innings pitched and strikeouts. Up to 35 now. This is Isabella Virouette. Looks like somebody's trying to tell their uh, Nana happy birthday there behind home plate. <laughs> so happy birthday, Nana. <laughs> So cute. I think it says it's an N there. Raylan Van Z and her defense will get out of that inning. Can they get the bats going and retake this lead? Moving over to the sixth. Haven Hansen. Who had the game winning hit for Texas in their quarterfinal is up right now. And in that nine spot, her job is just figure out a way to get on base. Walk, hit, anything. It was a two RBI single in the seventh inning. That's extra innings in Little yeah. League. You start to see a little worry in the dugout for Texas in their eyes. It's 
really good take on a one-two pitch. And a strikeout to start the sixth inning for Jenna Kiefer. Jenna Kiefer has been strong since she has entered this game working that outside corner curveball changeup. She has been very effective just mixing speeds. Texas has been biting at pitches out of the zone. Really good ratio of balls to strikes. She's just such a leader for them, you guys. Was even talking and communicating to the outfield, letting them know, hey, back up. This is Rocio. She's their leadoff hitter. And the right fielder right out there is continuing to follow her lead and continue to back up. Like, okay, is this good now? She's brought that leadership, and she's continued to develop that confidence where she wants the ball in this moment. She doesn't want anybody else out there in the circle. She wants it. Well, she's proven, too, that she can throw well whenever she starts a game. She's come into this game in relief and has looked really sharp, too. And that doesn't happen every single time. It's You don't take that for granted that just because somebody is a great starter that they'll end up being a good reliever, too. It's two completely different roles, and she stepped into both beautifully. Yeah, bases loaded situation, and has basically shut down Texas. Virginia said that that staff would be one of their strengths, and they've used it tonight. Relax, take a deep breath, have fun, okay? No matter what happens right here, have fun. Let it all out, right? Have fun. Let's go, kid. Edward Rocio talking to his daughter, Lexi Rocio. Trust me, they don't want to miss nothing right here either, okay? Just make sure you find your pitch right here and drive, but you got to protect right now, okay? Just don't drop this elbow in, okay? Punch through it. You're going to live away. Punch through it. Turn hard inside, okay? Give yourself a little room to give you some room to go. So Kim Bossler comes out to the circle quickly to talk to Jenna Kiefer. You heard Edward Rocio talking to Lexi, his daughter. I don't know if I'll be able to do a game again without coaches being mic'd up. Like, it's just a must for me. I love yes. being able to get yeah. the insight into their conversations. job getting rid of that pitch. Good battle. Keeper likes to work that curveball and she'll throw it on both sides of the plate too. Yeah, so you almost have to look away and then protect inside. So you look away trying to think middle oppo, but you see something coming inside, turn and get rid of it. Lexi Rocio, a deep shot. Bounces it to the fence. Will hold up at second. That could be just what Texas needed. Remember when Jenna Kiefer was telling Savannah Wright to back up? This is why, because Rocio has power to the opposite side of the field. This ball just traveled all the way to the warning track out there. I thought it had a chance to get out of, the, out of here. Held her up at second base, didn't want to risk taking third. She's already had a home run in this World Series. That was against this Virginia team. And now Raylan Van Zee. Van Zee representing the tying run at the plate. I mean, Texas is in the best part of the order. This is where they want to be. Van Zee and then Addison Young, who has had a super hot bat, came in hitting over 560 into this game, is after Van Zee. Erica Figgy grabs it, and she looks right at Lexi Rocio. Stays at second. It's a huge out for Kiefer and Virginia. And I love the way that Figgy just runs it in, not taking any chances. Ball could be wet, not letting it get away. 
But now Addison Young at the plate, and Jenna Kiefer will have to work carefully with this hot hitter. Addison Young, 10 hits to lead all batters in the World Series. Myers dropping back. Virginia will face Oklahoma in the championship. What a rally by Chesterfield Little League. Great game by Virginia. Clutch hitting when they needed it. Pitching shutting down Texas, but an amazing summer for this Texas Little League program. Yeah, they have a lot to be proud about their season. How they came out here and competed.